Recently, I did an episode about the drinks of prohibition, uh, and I mentioned in it the last word and that it kind of deserved its own episode. And that is what today is happening. We are doing the last word. You heard the last word with heard happily. Purred happily? Yeah, purred. God purred. He was so good. <laughs> Today on How to Drink, I'm gonna tackle the last word. It is a prohibition cocktail, a real comeback story. It's a very famous cocktail now. I mean, maybe it's not very famous, but certainly amongst cocktail nerds, it is well known and respected. The last word actually is sort of a formula that you can very easily swap different ingredients out as long as you have some understanding about how those ingredients are playing in that drink and come up with the kind of innumerable variations on it. There's probably even more famous variations of a last word uh, than the last word itself. The last word is gin, chartreuse, maraschino, and lime juice in equal parts. But there's also the final ward, which we did on the show, and I couldn't pronounce. I made a variation on it for Avengers Endgame that I called an Endgame. And a lot of famous bartenders, uh, you might call star tenders, have their own spins on it. And so it's kind of become called a bartender's handshake. It is a prohibition cocktail that was invented at the Detroit Athletic Club, which apparently was a good place to get a drink during Prohibition. It was very popular at the time, and over the years faded into a bit of obscurity. In 2005, Murray Stenson of uh, the Zigzag out in Seattle was looking through a copy he had of Ted Saucier's Bottoms Up, which is a 1951 cocktail manual for inspiration, old drinks to revive ideas, and he came across the last word, mixed one up and liked it, put it on the menu, it caught on, that was on the West Coast, and then, if I'm not mistaken, Audrey Saunders wound up putting it on the menu at Pego Club, which brought it to the East Coast, or brought it back to the East Coast. It kind of caught on by like wildfire around these two epicenters of cocktail culture of the you know, mid-2000s. And the rest is, as they say, history. Uh, this, by the way, is a pretty cool book. Um, this is just a, you know, a, a cheapy, cheapy photostatic reprint that I, can, I bought off of Amazon with an affiliate link below for your pleasure. Um, I would have preferred a color version because it's book, uh, Ted Saucy, his name is extremely uh, apropos since this is a very saucy book. It's filled with lovely um, uh, marginalia of uh, well, pinup gals. Um, and just a lot of cocktails arranged in alphabetical order. So it's an interesting window into history. The last word, courtesy Detroit Athletic Club, Detroit. Uh, is that the right way to say Detroit? Is it Detroit, Detroit? or Detroit. It is a French word. You know that it means the three rivers, Detroit. If you look at the Louisiana Purchase, it was part of the Louisiana Purchase, it was a French city, Detroit. It's Detroit. Sorry, you didn't know that? Anyway, Detroit, the cocktail was introduced around here. Around here. It's a book, man. <laughs> it travels. What the fuck is that? This cocktail was introduced around here, here, about 30 years ago. It's presented here as quarter dry gin, quarter maraschino, quarter chartreuse, Quarter lime juice ice, serving a cocktail glass. Um, okay, so very simple, simple drink. Let's just do it. Three quarters of an ounce would be a pretty standard way to build this. So three quarter, three quarter, three quarter, three quarter, three quarter. I, I'm gonna make mine with a full ounce because it's easier and I am lazy and I am not working to a bottom line here. I'm not serving drinks for a profit margin. I am serving drinks for myself. Um, so we'll go ouncey, 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 ouncey. So one ounce of lime juice. What? <laughs> I don't know about your house, but around here, lime juice, you know? When a recipe calls for, add some lime juice to that curry. I just throw some gin in there. No, sorry, one ounce of London dry gin. This is number one for the day, guys. So <laughs> my brain is booting up. All right, one ounce of chartreuse. Totally building this in the wrong order, by the way. We definitely should have started with lime juice. And that's really just down to uh, this principle that you're supposed to pour your cheapest ingredients first so that if you mess up along the way, you're not throwing out your very expensive chartreuse. I had an entire bottle of this fall off of that shelf and shatter. It was one of the saddest days of my life. An ounce of maraschino. Is it maraschino or maraschino? That is a great question. I suppose there's an argument to be made that if you were pronouncing the word in English, it is an English word and you should say maraschino, but it's an Italian word. And if you're pronouncing it in Italian, it would be pronounced maraschino. So, uh, everybody I know goes with maraschino. I'm just, whatever. A lime, one ounce of lime juice. Lime juice, come on down.
There's certain drinks that I know are going to be phenomenal just based on like the smell of them all sitting in the glass together. And of course you don't get this at home, but the smell coming out of here to me is just like, mm, so lovely. I can't wait to mix this up and drink it. Two ice cubes, one whole. Crack this sucker up. With a Nick and Nora glass on this one. I'm gonna double strain that. Not because I particularly need to, but because I'm trying to go fast. And that makes it fast. So there is the last word. Should we garnish it? Typically no, actually. It does not call for a garnish. Let's, uh, let's see how we did here. Yeah, I love that. It's a wonderful drink. I love that drink. I mean, it does have a very long evolution, right? I'd say it's like the flavor is in and out of your mouth, mostly in about 10 seconds, 15 seconds, which is pretty short by cocktail standards. And it's, it's probably meant to be something almost like a shooter. Like it's a quick drink that you should drink quickly, a bracing, quick pick me up drink, you know, belly up to the bar, have one of these, maybe settle into a beer afterwards. I don't know. I love the taste of this drink. It is so surprising and so bright and just tart with just the, the right kind of an amount of sweetness from the maraschino. And I would say it's kind of amazing how all of the flavors of this drink seem to be kind of in tension with each other in a really wonderful way. The chartreuse is kind of pulling in one way, the gin is pulling in another, the lime in another, and the, the maraschino in this other direction, this like chartreuse, you get the pepper. I always think chartreuse tastes like black peppercorns. Uh, the maraschino, of course, has that nutty cherry sweetness, the London dry with the juniper, and the lime with just that tart puckering uh, acid, right? And you just get this really taut drink. You know, you would never say taut. It's a, that's a taut flavor. But in this case, I feel like if you had this in your mouth and I said, that's a taut drink, it is taut, that would apply. You would get what I'm saying here. Everything is in balance, but in a very high tension balance. It's not so much that the flavors are even collaborating, it's that they're working against each other and keeping each other, each other in checks and balance. It really does just make your entire mouth kind of salivate as soon as it's in there. It's a very good drink. I love it. What's cool about a last word, of course, is that it is sort of a format for a drink. We can take various components of it and swap it out kind of almost on the fly. If you have a little bit of an understanding there of how they should work to yield new cocktails. Now, I grabbed a couple of extra bottles here. I didn't really plan this out. I had no fourth thought about this. I just grabbed two bottles that I thought we could do something with here. So I always think about how I get black pepper notes from chartreuse. Well, I have this ancho rays chili liqueur. We're gonna use that instead there. And then thinking in those, in that way, maybe we wanna go with a, a mezcal. Maybe this drink already exists, a mezcal word, I don't know. It probably does, because that's the thing, is that like, it's, it's so easy to do these variations. I don't know if it's gonna be good or not, but let's just mix it up and see if it is good. I, I was considering, you know, what's my citrus source gonna be here? Grapefruit wouldn't be a terrible option, but I don't have a grapefruit super handy. I think lime is probably fine, and I'm just gonna go with an ounce of lime juice. And a lot of times when you know, you're building variations, you wanna make small moves rather than gigantic ones, right? So we've already switched out a few things. Let's keep our variables to a minimum. And I've never had this drink before. So it might be garbage. It might be garbage. Oh, that's a great name for a show. It might be garbage. Uh, new show from me. We don't know what we're making. It could be garbage. An ounce of Ancho Ray's chili liqueur. An ounce of Vida Mezcal. And an ounce of Maraschino. Let's put some ice in it. And just so it's in a different glass, we're gonna put this in a sour glass. Maybe not exactly the right glass for this drink, but again, I don't know what we have here, so. Could do worse, not the worst glass. Woo, smell. And it really is, right away, this drink fills the room with its presence. The unnamed, how to drink last word variation number one. That's a great drink. That's not bad at all. That's definitely somebody's jam. I think it's missing the chartreuse though. I think you'd want to split the ancho rays and the chartreuse if I was to make that again. And I'm not going to, but it's not bad. I like it a lot. Let's go actually with the notes really quick. You get smoky, spicy mezcal, 
tempered by lime. You get like a, uh, a heat from the ancho rays. This is much more a collaborative thing than this. The end result here is mostly helping the mezcal, moderating it in some ways, because I can find smoky drinks overpowering. I don't find this overpowering at all, but lengthening it, it's almost like it takes that mezcal smoke, that punch, and slows it down and helps it unfold over time instead of it hitting you all at once. I like this a lot, actually. <laughs> this is a great drink. I think both are viable. I think I like it better with chartreuse. I would have to do another build again. So if you're doing a one ounce mezcal, one ounce lime, then I would do a half ounce chartreuse with a half ounce of the ancho rays. I think that would be the drink that I would really like to see come from this. A third drink in this episode? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. Who would do such a thing? Another drink in this episode. Oh my god. Okay. Sure, why not? Third drink in this episode. Uh, so this is that variation, but made splitting the ancho rays with chartreuse. Uh, visually, it of course reads much closer to a last word. Let's see if it's any good. I like that a lot. I think that's a really cool drink. I think that splitting the chartreuse with the ancho rays you get a different note up front from the chartreuse that is missing here, which this drink, it makes this drink feel a little bit one-dimensional. Not bad, but a little bit one-dimensional. Here, I like that. I also am not, I'm not a huge fan of like a mouth burn, like from pepper, um, which the ancho rays is what you're getting here. Is you, This is like got some like, it's like chili, you know? Like it, it burns like spicy food. Not bad, but in a way that I personally am not a huge fan of in a drink. I'm not a big fan of like uh, jalapeno infusions and in cocktails and chili pepper infusions and in cocktails. Uh, just on a personal note, I know a lot of people like them. That's what I was saying is that like, this is somebody's favorite drink. It's a good drink that just isn't for me. This is the version that I like a lot better. I think that if you're just interested in mixology and you're just getting started, a last word is a really cool thing to study because it gives you like a framework to work from. You know, your page isn't so blank, you know, it's not like that you have an infinite number of options. You have a framework, you gotta fill these blanks. It's a little bit like Mad Libs and that helps you understand the role that the various components all play in the drink because if you don't, if you don't understand that, you know, oh, it's four things equal parts. So I'm gonna make my last word variation with a bottle of rum, some rye, uh, some vermouth, and some Irish cream. That will be a very bad drink. Probably, actually, I don't know what I'm thinking about. But, uh, <laughs> so the last word works if you understand the formula and how the different stuff in it is playing. And yeah, sure, not every cocktail is going to be built off of an existing formula. That formula can teach you some things, I think. I don't know. I've never had to make drinks professionally for people in a bar setting, so everything I'm telling you could be a lie. I'm on Twitter at How to Drink. I'm on Instagram at How to Drink. I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. Yeah, I'm on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD. That's the best place to hang out with me. Also, if you don't like Twitch for some reason, but you wanna see what I'm doing on Twitch, you can check that out at my second channel, H2D2. All of my barware is provided by Barfly Mixology Gear. They make pretty great stuff. And there's an affiliate link down there in that pinned comment. Now well, that's the last word with Greg. I'm coming for you, Lawrence. I'm coming for your show. Your time slot will be mine. You and me, Lawrence O'Donnell. Hell in a cell. I think I could take Lawrence O'Donnell on a fight. Not that anybody was asking. <laughs> <laughs>